going on? You're watching Centenary Talk. I'm James Zaronicki. With me is Nick Bianco, or Bianco, depending yeah. on who you're talking to. We're going to talk about Enactus. Yep. Maybe some meditation, right? Yeah. All right, man. What's, uh, what's going on with Enactus? All right, so um, Enactus is a club. It's an entrepreneurship, uh, a social entrepreneurship organization. And uh, what that means is it allows students to create their own projects and ideas that can eventually um, turn into like real life inventions and uh, business club. Yeah, okay. basically. That's cool. I know last year you guys went to Kansas City. Yeah, so um, there's two competitions. There's regional and uh, a national competition. So the regional competition last year was held in Washington D.C. and uh, it's pretty. Um, it's similar to Shark Tank, meaning like you go up there, you have a, a scripted presentation that's can be up to 17 minutes and 51 seconds long, which is like a pretty weird time. Um, but if you go over it, like they stop you immediately, and then uh, there's a five minute question period. But there's like five judges sitting there. Uh, there's like 30 judges. Right. You're like, so what it is is like you go to, a ho for regionals, you're in a hotel, um, you go to a conference room, and uh, in this conference room, there's about like 30 to 40 judges, and uh, they're all sitting in chairs. It's pretty intimidating. Um, you have three minutes to set up all your equipment and be ready. And um, if you're not, then your run time for 17 minutes and 51 seconds starts. And if you miss it, you're How many people on the screwed. team? Um, so our team, we travel with like, last year we traveled, I think, with like 13 to 15 kids. But um, Kyle Maris and myself were the technical directors. So we were responsible for the presentation and all the visuals. But then we had a team of, uh, I think, six. And they were in charge of our uh, presentation, which is the script. So they would memorize this long, long script, and then they killed it uh, every competition. So what was your, so you guys were pitching like a business idea. Yeah. What was your business idea last year? Um, was everyone given the same prompt? Like you guys all have to do the same? Yeah, so, teams? yeah, so like it's, um. What, well, do you mean like the other teams have the same? Do you guys all have the same? Objective and you just all are pitching. Yeah, well, so the objective of Enactus is to create um, a product that benefits um, either your society, your country, or your community, which is pretty big and like yeah, deep if you think awesome. about it. Um, so, a few examples of products that our school has come up with and brought to competitions. Um, last year, uh, Cheap Horsewear is our oldest project and it's, um, it's medical wear, it's a chemotherapy jacket that's designed for patients with, at first it was designed for patients with breast cancer, but now all cancer. And what it is is it ha it's a zip-up sweatshirt similar to the one you're wearing. But, for example, it has an invisible zipper that runs from here to here, here to here, and then here to here. Um, and those, so like, here I'll show up here so you can see it better. Um, you unzip this part of the jacket and say someone with breast cancer, they can have all their plugins put directly on their breasts. Okay. Um, so the idea for this is it's, uh, it's kind of non-invasive and uh, it empowers patients. It, like, it makes them feel good because they don't have to walk around in like a, so usually if you have breast cancer, like these people are sitting getting treatment like topless. Mm -hmm. And it's not really private, it's usually like a, a group so that you can feel more comfortable talking to other people. And uh, by wearing this sweatshirt, it can just really help them out and That's make awesome. them feel like normal It's a good again. idea too. But um, the I project, oh, yeah. I can imagine that's uh, yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, it, that doesn't seem right. But uh, the project that I'm involved with, I'm actually the project lead on um, Shields. It's a wearable driving device well, to detect fatigue. So what it is, it's a silicon band with a logic board that sits on top of the wrist. And it measures electrodermal activity uh, using electrodermal sensors, which is the same technology that is used for measuring on lie detectors and what it measures is sweat and your skin secretion and currently it is the most accurate way to test for fatigue uh, compared to something like heart rate like which is like what the Apple Watch monitors. Mm -hmm. So uh, this product it uses a series of beeps and vibrations to try to wake the driver up while if they fall asleep and so what it does is it doesn't wake you up if you're already sleeping it goes off when it when you when it alerts and finds like signs of fatigue because it, it's kind of like getting you to pull over in a way. Yeah. So then, uh, what the device is doing is um, these huge trucking companies that have hundreds and hundreds of employees. Um, they're 
time slots, so you have like a lot of shift hours, so you can only drive for like certain periods of time. Um, so what this bracelet does, hopefully, it'll help like, it'll help keep them organized with their time periods to make sure that like, because if you go over like your time shift, you can get in a ton of trouble. Yeah. And um, or fatigue re related accidents are the biggest cause of accidents in the commercial trucking industry, so that's why that's like our target market. But obviously the product can be sourced out to anyone who works long hours and just needs help staying awake because if you talk to like loved ones or friends, um, they'll tell you uh, some people drive a lot, some people just work very hard. And uh, with that, you become fatigued. And does it wake you up? So is it, yeah, how does it alert you when you're? So when it detects fatigue, it beeps and it uses um, cryptonic tones, which are, uh, it's like a loud beep, but it's, it's a sound that's supposed to wake you up non-invasively. So um, the idea for it is if you are asleep at the wheel, um, when it wakes you up, it, it won't startle you too much. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll help save lives. And um, honestly, I, it just feels really good to be a part of something that can help uh, yeah. a ton of other people. Okay. Um, so let's get back to Enactus this year. So now, at this point in time, you are the president, right? No, I'm, I'm the project lead, or like the CEO of our Shields team, and uh, the technical director. Okay. Yeah. What's that like? Um, it's a lot of work, uh, but it's fun. It's a challenge, and um, it really uh, allowed me to become uh, someone who I never thought I could. I, I stepped up uh, as a leader in, in many ways, and uh, that's something I'm... I'm proud to say because I've never had a true leadership role uh, as I do now and it it's empowering to uh, see my peers and my classmates and um, when when uh, like for example yesterday when I was in the career center um, I was explaining shields to uh, Zach a student worker and uh, this girl was like wow I, I've heard of that I can't believe that you're the one involved with that and when people say things like that it it, it makes me really humble and because to be completely honest uh, I shouldn't be in that position but uh, I guess just hard work is the reason I'm there or something. Um, what kind of lessons do you feel like you can take from being in this position from an actress? What kind of lessons do you think you can take from that and move forward with? And um, not just in your position from an in, in, in actress in, in general. general you know. uh, that's actually a really good question. So. I'm a radio and television communications major, which is related nothing to business or entrepreneurship, but um, my father and grandfather are both entrepreneurs, so uh, I guess uh, that, that mentality is just um, installed in me from a young age, and uh, what Anactus made me realize and what I can really take from Anactus is that um, it, it really proved to me that um, I, can, I can conquer anything uh, if, I, if I put my mind to it. and. Uh, so can anyone with just like a little hard work and dedication and if you uh, it really made me sh like showed me that uh, if you if you just find a passion for something and you stick with it and uh, even if you're just like working towards it little by little every day like say five minutes uh, eventually all your hard work will add up and uh, at, I used to I used to be really hard on myself last semester because I thought that I was just putting in all these hours of work for absolutely nothing mm -hmm. And then um, as soon as we went to competition and got our name called at regionals for first place, and uh, when Dr. P, our Enactus teacher, uh, pulled me aside and was like, hey, I got your plane tickets for Kansas City. That's awesome. Like, yeah, there was, there was no better feeling because like the whole second semester, that's all we talked about was it went from Washington, D.C., and we'd be in class, and I'd be, I'd be screaming at the top of my lungs, like, how bad do you guys want to go to Kansas City? Like, because it's, it's an incredible experience. It's like playing for the oh, Super yeah, Bowl, for sure. yeah. So what place great. were you guys in? Um, so we finished first in the regional competition, which was a blessing, honestly. And um, nationally, we finished in the top 28 out of 400 schools. Wow. So um, it was a truly humbling experience. Uh, we got third in our division um, against some huge schools like Texas. Um, even Rutgers was in it, but like for a school like Texas, they have millions and millions of dollars in alumni money and resources. And coming from a small private liberal liberal arts school, um, 
it really just proves that you can do anything. We have very minimal resources, and we're coming into these competitions with some of the most advanced projects. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I guess it, even if you have nothing, you just you got to make it work. And I mean, that it like it just opens my like you were saying before with the life lessons and stuff. Like it, it just opens my eyes to so many like possibilities. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to explain it really. Um, so give me a little timetable right now. So what's coming up? For an active. All right, so. Any, you know, competitions coming up or? Uh, so competition is in, it's in Philly this year in March 25th, pumped. Uh, can't wait, count down the days. And then if we win our region, then the competition is in Kansas City again. Um, and that's May 25th, so two months after the regional. But uh, where we're at right now is still in the prototyping phase of our product shields. Um, I actually signed the trademark papers last week, so our name is Trademarked Shields um, Wearable Technologies. That's Very, awesome. Yeah, proud to say that. And uh, so I'm working with this company, PNC PCB Electronics in Nutley, New Jersey, and they're developing our prototype. So where I'm at now is just uh, keeping in contact with them, just making sure we're both doing our job and uh, getting it done. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what would you say to any potential uh, members, anyone who might want to? join and uh, jump on board of this um, I would say to any new Anactus members um, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to try um, don't be afraid to join the club no matter what your major is um, and just really uh, just take the opportunity by the horns and uh, ride it out because in the beginning I was just one of those kids who sat in the classroom um, was real quiet had my head down just wasn't really saying much because since I didn't really have a business background I didn't think my input was too important so um, I was a real quiet kid in class, and then uh, one day uh, someone said something that in my head it just sparked, and uh, I was like, wow, I can do this. I'm, I'm actually a really valuable member to this team. And uh, through um, <coughs> a little guidance of uh, my teacher, Dr. P, um, she made me realize uh, how great of a student I could be. It's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. You heard him. Uh, if you want to jump on board of Anactus, yeah, do it. Definitely do so. Yeah. Uh, I'm James Zawernicki. This is Nick Bianco, and uh, you've been watching Centenary Talk. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Centenary Talk. Uh, I'm James Zawernicki. Uh, we got the sports guy Chris Snow with us. How you doing? About to break down some some sports, man. All right, so All things sports. So listen, this is a story for you. All right, last night I was like walking to my car, and I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, I'm 20 years old, like trick or treating isn't a thing. Then I look at the sports field, the uh, J. E. Reeves Jr. Field, I should say. And I'm just like, dude, I'm like 20 years old. Like, whatever happened, to, like me going outside playing tackle the man with the football with my friends and stuff. So today I wanted to talk to you about like childhood sports. Like, how did you get to the point today? Like college lacrosse All right. my introduction to lacrosse you know I, I was playing little league baseball mm -hmm. that's where I started too. I was first overall pick in the draft wow I killed it in tryouts comes something man the lights just didn't match up I was awful I was the biggest bust in Gloucester little league baseball. oh man um so I, I go in I had three hits the whole year two of those were fouls the other was a pop-up like, <laughs> I was trash <laughs> you, were, and, uh, you weren't making contact yeah, at man, all. Right? And I, by the end of the year, I hated it. I was like, man, I just want this to be done. I hate yeah. the sport. It's I boring. Hate baseball. Yeah, it was awful. And uh, right, there's two outs. The guy on, I think it was third and first. And I'm up to bat. Right? And for the World Series, which is This is break, huge. This we're is down by three, maybe. And right, I'm going up to bat, and all the kids are going, Oh no, Jamie's up, dude. Jamie's up. <laughs> dude, don't put that hitter, man in. Pinch hitter, and I'm going, pinch hitter. Like I don't want to do this. It's like pinch hitter. And the coach looks at me right in the eyes. He goes, Jamie, you can do this. Oh man. I go up to bat, strike on three, and we we lost. So and I was like, you know what? I'm playing lacrosse. Done with baseball. And I'm glad I made that uh, decision because that was lacrosse. Was lacrosse like big in Gloucester? Gloucester? No, Gloucester. 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 Well, it depends where you're from, how you say it. So was it big? Um, no, it was not. I mean, I think my cla our class uh, in Gloucester were kind of the ones to make the sport popular. You okay. know? Prior to that, there were maybe like 10 kids in the PE program. It was tiny. And then uh, we kind of 
You know, we kind of led the uh, charge. Yeah, led charge. Did Did you play football growing up? I did. Um, I love football. I still, you know, and I miss it. But I had a lot of concussions growing up. Um, you know, just the bad stuff that keeps playing. But I miss it, man. To me, football, Pee Wee football is like the prime. That I that is the prime. Seventh grade Pee Wee football. Cheerleaders are cheering, cheering my name, you know. Jamie, Jamie. And now, now what position did you play? I was uh, I was tight end, and then I was DN. I was a defensive guy, man. You are. And a then I played guy. freshman year of football. Uh, in high school, I was a safety, and uh, and then at, and at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done. I had another concussion, and it's like it doesn't work. And but yeah, I don't know, man. What about you? I told you I hyped up my high school football what years. What are you talking about? Is playing corner. High school football was some of the greatest years of my life, but. You're gonna laugh at me because I never told you about like my little league experience. Mm-hmm. I started well. I started like playing sports. Uh, like I think soccer was like the first thing you play when you're like four. It's like some little league thing. And I was like, me and my twin brother we used to like push people around. My dad were like, you guys are gonna play football. So me and my brother actually went a year early to play football. They let us, and like we loved it right away. But like ever since we started football, from the youngest pee wee all the way to eighth grade, we had like three wins maybe our first year, and then two wins, then one win, and then we went like 0 and 9, like our eighth grade and seventh grade years. Like we were so bad. So like going into high school, everyone's like, dude, like these kids aren't good. And then it came to our senior year. Like that's like our year, you know, like, oh, well this team was always so bad and Pee Wee, they're not gonna be good. I mean, we made it, dude, that's what I'm saying. We went seven and two, we um, made it to playoffs. Uh, We actually had a home playoff game. We won our first, then our semifinal, we had a home playoff game, and then we lost that one. And that was, like, the real heartbreaker. But, like, it was just so nice to, like, prove to everybody, like. Just about, man, the ride. Just right? proving. And the best time was, like, wow, I just moved that in my back. The best time was, like, me in the locker room, like, with my friends. Like, people ask me, do I miss it? Like, I miss it so much. I miss the games, the atmosphere, man. There's nothing like Friday Night Lights. There was absolutely nothing like playing on that field in front of. Like, Roxbury is a pretty good football town, like, in front of so many people. I would have loved to have seen a game, you know, but you never called me. No, so. we're going We're going tomorrow. We're going to go Friday tomorrow. again. Wait, Why? Tomorrow, Friday. Tomorrow, Friday. Tomorrow. 7 p.m.? I was playing for last weekend. And then you never texted and, me. You, okay, well, you're the guy. This is charge. this is rivalry weekend. You're not coming? What time? Are tomorrow at 7. Who they playing? They're playing the Randolph Rams. It's Roxbury versus Randolph, one of the yeah, biggest rivalries. Randolph. Randolph? It is Randolph. It's right next to us. Okay. Like, that's our rival. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, I had a similar thing with you too. Like I started with baseball, like T ball. I don't yeah. know if you start with T ball. Yeah, I was like pretty good at T ball, but how are you bad? You hit the ball yeah, off the tee, you know what I mean? And like my dad used to say, like I, I just used to play outfield, but I used to run in the infield, try to get the ball and stuff, and I was like, This is like so boring. Like I can't be a kid and just sit there in the outfield. Give me something to do. I pick up a stick, I go play lacrosse and everything just clicks, man. Like it just stuck with me. Bobby started playing like fifth grade. Bobby, your brother. Yeah, yeah. my older brother. Um, Old assistant coach here. Yeah, uh, and then I was just like, I mean, I'll try lacrosse, and it was just so much more fun. Yeah. Like you could hit people, you run around with your friends, and that's when lacrosse for us started getting popular in my town too. Mm-hmm. Like my grade especially started getting popular, and lower grades are very good now. Yeah. I yeah, uh, well, I think that's. So you said your brother played before you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way it normally works. Like my mm-hmm. my older brother, he played too, and I was like, oh, this is kind of neat. And then you hear, oh, it's created from Indians, you know, yeah. Native Americans. Yeah, Native and, Americans. Uh, they used know, to play with, like, I don't know, I read the story. They used to, like, weave their sticks, and they used to play over territory. So, like, they yeah. used to make a ball, and, like, different tribes would, like, would go die. against each other. Yeah. They would die. They would run for, like, miles on end. Like, that's Ga- just Games nuts. would last, I think, like, four days. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm happy. Some settle disputes, man. It's just sad. Yeah, that's it's what it's about. A bunch of bros just so, what do you think about, uh, I mean, lacrosse is starting Monday for fall ball. I know you can't play due to your injury, but this is your senior season, so, like. It is crazy, man. Like, everybody says it, you know, like, oh, it's going to fly by, and then it does. Like, I cannot believe I'm a senior. I feel like I was in sixth grade yesterday. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy, man. It's and it's one of those things where I'm sure I won't really settle into how much I'm going to miss, you know, organized sports until after this year, but. You know, I'm excited for this year, and I think we're going to uh, do awesome things, man. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, I can agree. Like, me being in my junior year, everyone's like, dude, you're 20, you're turning 21 in, like, a month. You you know, you're almost done with your college career. I was just talking about how I'm trying to get all my major classes out of the way, yep. and it's just like, it's like flash, boom. Like, it's real life soon. It's real life, and I can't. 
Oh yeah, this is all the bills. This is getting depressing. Turn into like well, I'm some done. Piano music in the back. We really do have to. Yeah, but like lacrosse has always been like an outlet for I don't know for me. It's just like so, like away from, especially in school here. Like you got all this work to do. We got this going on. Yep. We got TV shows, radio shows. It's just a nice release. Like get out there, just have fun with your friends, yeah. man. Um, let's talk about your junior season. Okay. You're making that transition to upperclassmen. Okay. I'm so I'm down to talk. Your expectations. Uh, my expectations were actually pretty high coming into the season. I know we lost a couple kids and our team's looking pretty small, but from my standpoint, I know as an offensive player, um, I'm gonna have to step up due to who we lost and like roles are being switched. I mean, no one's always been our go-to guy, but everyone's gonna be putting a long stick mini on them. They're gonna be doubling them. So, I mean, it's time for me to step up, not only as a player, but as a leader. Yeah. Um, I've definitely been a little bit quieter just because I've seen you guys and your class has always been the majority uh, for my freshman year here. You guys were always playing the most. You guys had the most kids, had the most influence on the team. And I think I've learned a lot from your class. So hopefully I bring that into my junior season and I get to the peak of my uh, college career yeah. and then keep that going through senior year and keep the tradition alive. Yeah, man, I, uh, no, it's, uh, you know, junior players step up, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, my last question before we go, you said you went to a, the horse um the horse show, I don't know, the event. Equine, the Equestrian IHSA horse event. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know I asked long you already. Day. Long day. That's like that's a long day. It's so, like a, uh, longer than a work day. I, I respect the sport, man. I'm a huge fan of horses. Uh, and those who are brave enough to jump on them, bless her, I mean, you ride them, you know. But uh, long, long day. It's like eight hours. Jeez. And, uh, I mean, they've been kind enough. They... It's kind of, it's funny, it's like a casual, you know, there's like snacks everywhere, yeah, yeah. you know, you get little breaks, you get some coffee. Um, no, they, they've won, Benton already won, congrats. Yeah, ben, uh, keep, keep being team. number one. Yeah. Keep no, us on the map, they're like, definitely. They're low-key, uh, very talented. Like every year they're second or third in yeah. the country. So. Definitely. Yeah, but um, yeah, go catch a horse event, man. You heard it here Those first. Those are terrifying, by the way. The horses? Horses. Why? Because they're shredded. They're beautiful animals. They're they are shredded. shredded. They are shredded. And uh, all it takes is if they don't like you and you're behind them, they're just going to yeah, kick a little, you in the face. A little kick to the and face. You need yeah. to get surgery and, I don't know, man, things scare the bejesus out of them. Well, your girlfriend has a horse, so, like, have you, you've obviously. She doesn't actually personally own one, no. Oh, she doesn't? No, she doesn't. So is it, like, through the school that she, like, rides yeah, you go from? to the barn and, you know, even when you're there and you're walking down the the stall, mm -hmm. the hallway, you know, and they got all the horses and their heads are popping yeah, yeah, yeah. out. It's terrifying. Really? They're making these noises and they... Did you ever, like, go with her to, like, touch one? Like, I've touched them, yeah. I've touched horses. And you're still scared? They're terrifying. I just, I do not like being behind them. That's my one thing. I will. Do not let me okay. be behind a horse. Because all they need to do is just kick I know, I agree. Just, you're screwed. Powerful. If Powerful. goes into your gut, man, goodbye. Goodbye. You need, you need a new kidney. <laughs> you need a new <laughs> kidney. But, oh, uh, man. No, I mean, but yeah, they had a great, uh, great performance. That's awesome. What about uh, soccer? Ba soccer. Basketball's coming. Yes. Up. Started practicing. Uh, yeah, basketball started practicing. I believe last week. I think the girls had a scrimmage yesterday. They went away. I'm not sure how they did. They don't really tell you about scrimmages. Uh, both men's and women's soccer are moving into CSAC playoffs. I think the men. No, no. The, sorry. Excuse me. The women have their last game today. It's away. It's against uh, Clark Summit University. Mm -hmm. So then after that, the standings and the seedings will come out for the CSAC playoffs. I'm assuming during the weekend. So if you want to check that out, you go to centenaryuniversitycyclones.com. You go under men's soccer, women's soccer, and you go to the schedule, and I'm sure it will be posted there. Okay. But we'll see how they do. I'm hoping to get another CSAC championship from That'd the men, awesome, and man. hopefully one for the women. I haven't been here for the women. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, Robert Bergman, man. Yes, Rob he Bergman is missed. gone. Sports information, he man. He just passed. He's actually... He's, yeah, he's at Kane right now, I believe. Really dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you no, did. I, uh, <laughs> you did sound dark. He was the the foundation of all the sports. Sports information. Yeah, no, he was really good. He ran the page. He did all the articles. He was really good about it. But uh, he's definitely in a better place, bro. <laughs> he's definitely in a better. <laughs> what about uh, basketball? Basketball. New men's coach. Yeah, Damian Pitts. I don't know much about him. I have no idea. He honestly, I. Walk by him all the time. He just looks at me. He doesn't big even. Guy. He is big a big guy. guy. He looks. Like six, eight. He looks like a like a big bad man. Yeah. I'm 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 assuming he played 
good basketball, so maybe for a D1 school. But I know, like I said, he scheduled that D1 uh, basketball game against... Uh, oh, yeah, the big, uh, the big game. Yeah, against UMBC. Um, so that'll be interesting. I'm assuming he has connections probably. with them. He's from Maryland. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he probably... He yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't know about Damian Pitts. He's a very intimidating man. Um, no, they yeah, they look pretty good. I heard a couple of their freshmen can really play. I was watching practice the other day. They look pretty good. You were just watching practice? Yeah, I mean, casually I, hanging out. No, so like practice? after the, after the weight room, I did leg day yesterday. So after the weight room, I'm like, dude, I can't go back to my room yet. I'm taking a, I'm taking a drink and I sit on the couch and I'm watching and I'm just like, oh, they look pretty good this year. Like uh, Rashawn's the obviously the like the known person for the basketball team, but they got a lot of different uh, weapons that they're looking to use yeah. this year, like uh, H. And uh, a couple of the freshmen, H. I think H, you don't know him by H. That's the only reason, that's the only way I know him, H. What's his first name? I don't know, I just call him H. Yeah. That, that he's in my class. Hemp, oh, it's Hemp, Hemp. His name's Hemp? Hemp, you don't know Hemp? No. Okay, well, he's in your grade, so is you it? should know Hemp. No, he's not. Yes, he is, yeah. Hemp. Oh. Oh, well, Hemp's H can have a big big year? I'm, I'm looking for him to have a big year. We'll, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, bro, yeah. good stuff. I know there's a lot of freshmen on the team. Right? Yeah, there are. There are. I like I said, the one freshman, Chris, is looking really good. Uh, point guard, maybe shooting guard. So we'll see how they do this year. Awesome. Well, you heard it from the uh, the sports guy, Christopher Snow. Uh, tune in next week. Maybe we'll uh, give an update on the basketball teams, the soccer teams, and the soccer teams. Yeah, That's definitely. Basketball. Well, yeah, basketball and soccer. We got it all going on. Um, you've been watching Centenary Talk. I'm James Alanippi, and wait with me is Chris Snow. Uh, we'll catch you next week.